for some of you. Uh, we're going to be talking about that today as we get into 2021. Uh, as always, if you're joining us live through the Facebook platform or other social media channels, we try to make this as interactive as possible. So share us your questions. Uh, let us know what you're thinking, what questions you may have, and the team will get back to them uh, during the course of the conversation today. But Laurel, very happy to have Scott and Weldon here with us. So without further ado, I will let you uh, get to it. Absolutely. And welcome back. Uh, these are now our Ask Laurel weekly broadcast every Tuesday at 12 noon. And uh, we're going to be doing different themes. Last week or last week, last month was New Year, New You and all about your commitments. Continue those going just because the month is over doesn't mean your commitment's over and what you need to be doing. So again, your uh, hashtag uh, 2021 commitments, put that on our Millionaires in Training Facebook group and uh, continue to move along. Stay tuned uh, for a few other places. I'll have Steve and Thomas talk about that in a little bit, but we have launched our uh, business account over on TikTok and Clubhouse. So uh, those of you that are viewing on other channels, uh, stay tuned to be seeing us over there more and more. Um, today, as we start February, clearly we're going to do a whole love and money and we've got all that plan. We've got a fun campaign. Um, we're going to share your story. Um, divorces are happening at an all time high. Not well, because honestly, people are having to hang out with each other um, and they don't talk about money. And money has been extremely stressful since COVID. So uh, that series is really going to be picking up next week. Eileen will be on. We'll be talking about uh, how do you have family meetings, family contracts? How do you have that conversation in your household? Today, though, we had to do this like all alert broadcast because we have a new team in Washington, which is interestingly doing odd things. So um and a lot of things are going to be shifting. So before it hasn't all been announced, but before that happens, I know a ton of you, especially big table members and head of the table, you have been asking, what do we do? What do we do? What's going to happen with capital gains? What's going to happen with estate tax? So we wanted to give kind of a state of the union as we know it today. And uh, obviously we'll be bringing Weldon and Scott back over and over as things unfold, but let's give you where we are today. So again, those of you in the chat, if you have questions, um, start uh, putting them in the chat. I will be feeding them to Scott and Weldon, but let's start off. You all know Scott Arden. He's been every event, um, travels with us. Most of you have done your corporations with him. Um, so we're going to come to him. Secondly, I want to introduce Weldon Wilson, um, who many of you know, he does extraordinary tax strategies, tax planning, um, is, uh, also my CFO and, uh, strategist with uh, everything we're doing here at IWS, our Integrated Well System. So Weldon, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be here. Good to have you. So tell us what's on the horizon. Uh, what do people need to, because there's a lot of worried people about, you know, taxes going up, crazy, you know, executive orders going in. I mean, yeah, I have so, I mean, one, of my yeah. clients, one of my clients has 28 properties, like, oh my God, should we sell them because we're going to have capital gains? Like, I got questions galore for you. So I'm going to let you talk and then we'll go for it. Yeah, so I mean, there, there's, I mean, there is quite a bit. Of it. Obviously, the proposed, the, the new administration has has a plan, quote unquote, out there, but nothing's been submitted, nothing's been proposed yet. But this is just kind of the detail and a, a synopsis of what their plan, their current plan is. Um, you know, and and you can kind of boil it down to ten main areas. Uh, you've got they're going to increase the higher uh, tax rates. The highest rate currently is thirty seven percent. That's going to jump up to 39.6 percent. For what? For uh, for basically, roughly, if you make over four hundred thousand dollars, your AGI is four hundred thousand um, dollars. Your top rate goes from 37 to 39.6. Back to where it was before the 2018 tax law was put in place. Um, that's one of the top oh, items. So, note to self: Do not be a high income earner on payroll. <laughs> so, so again, I mean, and. And kind of Scott, Scott kind of mentioned this whole thing. What this really, I mean, and this is really any kind of new tax change. It, it dictates the fact that, that you really need to plan. You, you really need to plan this stuff because your situation, and especially for right now, um, for 2021, none of these are typically going to, well, it's very unlikely that any of these ideas or any of these things would be put into uh, existence before 2022. So we do have a year to kind of go through this to get this stuff straightened out to kind of get, I mean, if we need to do moves and need to move some stuff, we need to, you know, we can do it during the year. So um, the other thing, there's uh, potentially going to be a phase out of the itemized deductions. Again, this is all basically people that make are making over $400,000. Um, uh, itemized deductions are going to be phased out. Um, 
the one of the things for people that live on the coasts, California and New York, the one of the good things is uh, the plan does propose the elimination of that the salt limitation. So right now there's a you can only deduct 10 grand worth of uh, income tax, you know, state income tax and real estate taxes. Uh, that that would uh, be eliminated. Um, the one that I can't, and I, you've already already mentioned it, the capital gains rate. So when that comes in, you know, so what the proposal is right now, it, anybody who makes over a million dollars, the capital gains rate will be taxed at the 39.6% and not the lower 15, 20. The, right now it's kind of bracketed based off of your regular income. Um, and so that's, that is for the higher income earners. If you have a big giant capital gain, that could possibly affect you. So, you know, scheduling that, looking at the gains, what to sell, what not to sell is a great idea. Um, Social Security, there's going to be a, a additional tax on Social Security right now. It ends at a roughly 140 grand. Um, and then it will restart. If you make over $400,000 on a W-2, you're going to pay an additional 12% on Social Security. So that's going to be added in for high wage income earners. I mean, so again, try to stay away from being a high wage income earner. Uh, that's what I, the, the estate tax, um, there's two kind of proposals, one to reduce the transfer tax, uh, amount right now, right now you can, you can transfer $11.7 million without any kind of estate tax. Um, the proposal is to bring that back down to 2009, um, 2009, uh, rolls roughly about $5 million, cut it in half. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, but one of the things too, is the, they have that reduction. And then they also have the elimination of the step up in basis on inherited tax, inherited assets. I don't, I really don't think they're going to be able to get both of those through. It's going to be a one, a, an either or on that in my, in my opinion, but both of those are in the, the proposal to eliminate the step up in basis. And so that's where when, when um, a parent dies and, and, and the kids or, or somebody inherits the assets, you know, it, the assets are valued at the date of death. And so you, and then if you sell them, there's no gain on the, on the kids. Um, so the estate tax is really, I think one of the big parts of this whole thing is the estate tax. That's going to be a, um, a big issue. But they have really 2020 to be able to transfer so a lot of people who are around doing some nice legacy uh, building, where how would uh, they give some ideas on how to transfer? I know. Jason's yeah. So I mean, some of the ideas in like um, 2021, potentially setting up some uh, irrevocable trusts, transferring the assets to them. Uh, you know, taking advantage of that transfer of the 11 million. Uh, you know, transferring the assets out. Uh, you know, to your kids if you're older. I mean, there are yes to basically do some family transfers put it into a family LLC or something of that nature and then transfer the interest. Um, you can, so you can do these transfers anytime during your lifetime. The only issue is you have to report it. So, you know, if you're transferring more than $15,000 uh, to any one person e each year, you have to file a 709 tax return. So there's a tax return requirement that you'd have to do, but you could go ahead and do that, get that filed. Um, and then, you know, so you're eliminating it out of your estate one of the benefits of transferring it to a irrevocable trust is technically you could still have control of it. Um, you know, so even though you don't necessarily own it, you have control of it. Uh, so, you know, your kids don't, don't, can't just take it over. Um, so that's an, uh, you know, an option. Um, some of the other scary things that are in this is the, the real estate, the elimination of the real estate tax breaks. Um, there are two of them that really probably will, will, Two of them that, that people know about. One right now is the, the kind of the middle income earners. Uh, you're allowed, even though you don't have a, you're not a real estate agent, you can deduct $25,000 worth of losses on the real estate. That is on the proposal to be taken out. So you wouldn't be able to deduct that. Um, the only way you'd be able to get past that is if you became a real estate professional. So if you do have a lot of real estate, I mean, the good, it is a good idea to be able to be classified as a real estate professional. Um, and then the other one is the elimination of the 1031 exchange. Um, with these, I, uh, I think out of all of these sections, this section is probably going to be one of the hardest ones to get past. Um, just because the, 
a lot of the a lot of the states that are blue states rely on this income. So you look at California, New York, I mean, all basically the coasts. This 1031 exchange is a huge, huge deal for those states. And so, uh, I mean, if you don't want to get rid of this 1031, I would suggest you call your state senators and really tell them to take that out. Um, you know, and uh, yeah, so I would really be heavy on that, the real estate issues because I have a feeling it will, it will affect the real estate markets. So speak a little bit of um, about that. So Kelly Owens, a few others had some questions. Um, you know, how talk a little more about the 1031. So Is basically- it, uh, be, You think it's gonna be dismissed totally? and not even available? I mean, it's ridiculous. That's, that's kind of, I mean, that is what the plan is right at the moment. Um, I don't, I think that is a really, really hard sell, um, especially because the people who benefit from the 1031 are the constituents of the people who elected them. <laughs> so, yeah. so that, that I think there's, that's going to be, and not just, not just Biden, but, but I mean, all of the, um, you know, higher people in the Senate, you know, they're, the 1031 exchange is a big deal. And that's that, I mean, now what you might, I mean, I could see a potential where they might limit it. You know, maybe you could only do one or one a year or something like that, or have some kind of limitation on the number of exchanges you can do. Um, or if they, you know, maybe something like if you have a AGI or some other kind of income that's higher than, you know, the $400,000 or something like that, that there might be some kind of limitation. But um, I don't think they're, well, I'm hoping, and I would suggest to write any kind of letters or do any kind of thing that would eliminate, you know, to take that off the chopping block and to keep that 1031 exchange. Um, the other issue with the real estate is uh, right now, on a, we have this deduction called a, a QBI deduction. And that uh, QBI deduction is that it's a qualified bank business income. And for, if you have real estate and it's a profitable real estate that flows down through your tax return, you get that on your tax return. You can get roughly a 20% deduction on that real estate profitability. And so that is also on the chopping block block. I can, I could really see that that could take it they could take that off. That that is something I think would be pretty easy to get rid of. Um, now let's see. So also, some of the good, they're going to increase the child and dependent care credits. I mean that's not really for people who have kids. Uh, like but, I already say though, kids are tax deductible, so at least one thing is going to work in our favor. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it, it ups it from you know basically doubles it. Um, so that's from twelve to twenty four hundred dollars. It's a big deal. The, they're going to reinstitute the home buyers, the first time home buyer credit. Um, and then there are some green, green energy tax credits, tax savings. So, I mean, that's kind of the, the top, the top 10. I mean, there's, all, there's other items in there. Um, you know, the, yeah, the phase out. Uh, what about, so um, I'm going to come back to real estate. So, but what about gas and oil? I mean, you know, the hypocrisy of, uh, a pipeline that's clean and over 100,000 jobs to keep in the railway, which really is a Buffett problem because Buffett's the one and Gates, you know, benefiting from keeping the railway instead of the pipeline. Um, but in, in general, gas and oil prices, as you know, you, you and I have talked about this. I just want you to speak to the rest of the group because we do have some higher income earners and the way that some of these guys, right? I can say your names out, but you know who you are out here. You're going to have to use some gas and oil to to work on your deductions. Do you think they're going to, you know, mess with the gas and oil deductions or? So there is, there is no mention for any kind of gas and oil elimination or deductions or removal of those deductions Good. at all in the plan. Good. Good. So, Good. you know, I think the, the easy targets on this plan are the estate tax issues because nobody really pays attention to those. And, and again, most people who pay attention to them, they're, they're dead. It's their kids that have to deal with it, not you. Um, so, the easy targets, the state tax, the high, you know, over a million dollars making the um, making the, the capital gains at a higher when you earn a million dollars. So it's because, I mean, again, if you think about this, the whole, the whole marketing scheme of this plan is going to be based off of, we need the one percenters to pay their share of tax. I mean, that, that's going to be the marketing scheme of this. 
-hmm. And so the easy and they should cells pay for the ones that created it, right? Right. So the easy cells <laughs> are the ones, you know, the programs that really affect those people. The harder cells are the ones that, I mean, and if you really think about our economy, our economy is really based off that, the real estate building, selling. I mean, it, we have a huge section of the, our economy that's based off the re, off real estate. So to damage the real estate economy, I think would be a big risk. Um, but yep. you know, who knows? Yep. Um, so Nancy wants to know, she said, I think about, I'm thinking of selling a rental property in the fall this year, <clears throat> looking at a $45,000 capital gains. What type of investment would you think about to invest if not in real estate? Again, Nancy, potentially gas and oil. Uh, what if I was used money from my to purchase property in Costa Rica? Um, so technically, I mean, if it and technically, I just want to say we have somebody working on our team from Costa Rica who is having a heck of a time getting there. I don't know, given all the ridiculous restrictions, that you could even get there right now. And then, and Brie owns a business. I mean, I don't know if she's gotten down there or not, but she's been fighting getting back to run her own company as a U.S. citizen. So I think there's going to be a lot of the freedom you used to have, um, has all gone away. Traveling around is, I, I, I just know Costa Rica is a big problem. So those are kind of two different questions. So why don't you speak to the capital gains? And yeah, so the capital gains, I mean, if you sell it during 2021, it's still same capital gains rules that's, that's in place right now. Nothing's changing. You'd still have the ability to do a 1031 exchange. A 1031 exchange, you could exchange that into Costa Rica uh, because it's a, it is um, a U.S. territory. Um, you can't, you know, the 1031 exchanges do not work any kind of foreign investment, you know, outside of the U.S. Um, but, you know, so you can, you could do that. Um, and, you know, they did restrict this last tax law did actually restrict the 1031s significantly. You used to be able to exchange business property as well. Uh, but now it's just real, real property, real estate. Um, it's horrible, horrible. So, yeah, uh, a couple other things too. You know, they, the corporate rates, the C corporation rates is proposed to go up from a 21 to 28%. I don't think that's going to actually happen. My guess is there would be a bracketed system again. We'd go back to a bracketed system. Um, what exact the numbers that kind of work in what that, those brackets, I'm not exactly sure how that's going to work. But I mean, I think that's a much easier sell than just to raise all the corporate flat rate back up to 28. Um, you know, to start off with the, the smaller corporations where they maybe they're at a 15% bracket or something of that nature. And then, you know, as it, as it, again, it was before. So I think that might be modified, but again, in their proposal, it is a flat rate jump to uh, 28%. Yeah. What about retirement accounts? Uh, Tori wants to know, is there any effect? <clears throat> so the, the basic, and it, it's really vague in the plan the retirement of the retirement accounts, they were kind of, there's a, a, a consideration to change the deductibility of the retirement account. So instead of the, the IRA being deductible, it's actually, you get a credit for it or a larger credit, which would equal to the same amount. Um, but it would try to equalize the 401ks to an individual IRA where you're getting, you're getting a bigger deduction or a bigger credit for an IRA, um, contribution versus having to have a, a simple a 401k. So it, it's changing. It's still going to be deductible, but again, it was changing how it's going to be deductible or versus it's potentially going to be converted to a credit versus a deduction. And then will the, um, if you pass on like a legacy pass uh, a Roth or any qualified plans, you do the kids still have to spend it or reinvest, like really liquidate it in 10 years, they can reinvest, but they don't, they don't, they have to pay tax on it. Essentially. That's still in play. That's still, I mean, there's no mention of the chain, any changing in that, in the current laws for the retirement accounts when it gets transferred. Um, you know, again, this is just the, the proposed proposal. It's not even a proposal yet that's been sent to, to Congress. Um, you know, we have a better idea of what they're actually going to ask for when they get to that point. Okay. Kelly Owens wants to know if you don't put your real estate in a trust, could you record the Todd, like the time of death deed to avoid it? I'm assuming you're talking about what, a 1031, Kelly? You know, she's, you know, you know how to answer that or not? You know? so, so if, 
She is, if you've got. Tax, just tax in general, I guess, she said. So what was the question again, Laura? Um, if you put your, real, if you don't have your real estate in a trust, which it should be an LLC and LLC and trust. Correct. Um, can you record a time of death deed to avoid the tax? So basically you want to record a deed and transfer it into a trust before you die and a pre recording of it. That's I think that's the question. She may have yeah. If it's technically transferred, I mean, but it wouldn't really transfer until your time of death. I actually don't know the answer to that. Um, so if you can take the exemption and the step up in basis, I think is the, the question, if you do a pre-transfer deed without technically transferring it because it didn't transfer until you died, um, I would initially guess no, that that would not qualify. You would have to physically transfer it to the trust or physically transfer it to um, an LLC or, or some, you know, or, or the kids in order to do that, you know, change that control. Okay. Uh, Deborah said, I've had EIN um, since 1992 as a sole proprietor. Deb, stop it. Should you become an LLC uh, decades ago? Um, also, should I go for an, an SBA grant or a loan to build your business? I have several businesses. I can just tell, there's not an SBA, I don't know if you, Scott, or Weldon have seen, unless you are an entity in the past, um, I don't know how she could transfer that. Do you? I don't. I think you're out of luck. That's why, like at the end of the year, we said get it done, get it done, because you could have used all of last year's numbers. But if you're still a sole prop, I don't think she can apply. Do you, Do you guys think? I don't believe. Um, well, I, th I think she can still apply, but it would be as a new business versus having some, you know, some credit behind it, or not necessarily credit, but some history behind the business. Definitely should have been uh, set up as a as an entity uh, prior to the end of the year to be able to take advantage of that. But uh, you're a nine one one, Deb. You're going to call Scott right away. Scott, put your phone yes. in there. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you're a nine one one. So uh, follow up with Scott. Scott and the Elena are kind of helping with uh, the the loans and those processes with people. Well, then anything you want to add to that? No, I mean I think you most definitely apply for it. Yeah. For sure. Um, Nancy, uh, how about Social Security benefits? Um, are they going to be taxable? Um, any? They, they already are taxable. Okay. So um, there is no there is no mention of the cha of changing the taxability of that, whether they're going to take that off or not. Um, you know, it's still depending on what your income levels are uh, will dictate how much of that Social Security income is taxed. Um, so Jason Anderson said, you know, what are three things, but just I'd say things in general, you'd recommend to put with the whipsaw, you know, of going back and forth between the administrations. Uh, what would you put in place to minimize having to make big adjustments every time a new party takes power? So I'm assuming in your investment strategy. Um, um, what do you, any answers to that, Weldon? So, I mean, a couple of the things that I would really, you know, make sure you have, I having a couple different entities that you have the ability to change their tax, tax how they're taxed, i.e. LLCs, having some LLCs available to you that you are running stuff that you can manipulate or you can change to either a C Corp or, an, or convert it back convert to an S Corp or a partnership. So that flexibility is really key. So, I mean, and then also having, you know, making sure that your assets are being split up you know, protecting your assets. And then, I mean, using the, the trust system to be able to put, you know, put assets into it, I mean, at a, at a higher level um, or, you know, being able to transfer them to your kids if you try, your kids are older. I mean, setting up a family LLC, you know, with a, if it's got rent, real estate property or rental properties in there, I mean, that's not a bad thing to do to start transferring that quote unquote ownership off to the kids, um, you know, as sooner than later. Again, my, my recommendations, again, right now are really looking at the estate tax issue because I think that's going to that's gonna be uh, something that people get kind of, that people get hit with. Yep, I agree. Um, Mary Lou, I'm 76 years old. Should I open a Roth or an IRA? Uh, at that age, I am not a proponent of opening up a Roth. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. you need, for... For a Roth, a younger individual or something that has a higher risk, you know, investments in there, those are an amazing, an amazing uh, tool that you can use. Um, but I mean, you need you need five to ten years for that growth and the ability to be in there. 
for you to, to recoup that tax, the tax difference. So, I mean, and that's before you can even touch it and take it out. And, you know, using the Roth for things that are going to be, that are, the, that are volatile, that, that you don't necessarily need to take it out when you, so you're not relying on it. It's basically the, the ice cream or, or the frosting on your cake, you know, that, that really makes your, your life what, it, what you really want it to be. Um, but then you can dictate, you can maybe take it out in September or you don't have to, you could take it out, you know, six months later. So not having to require like the a minimum distribution out of that is what the, the Roth's good for. Okay. Um, what about bank uh, interest rates? And I'm just going to add a <laughs> I have bank interest rates, mortgage. I'm not seeing anything from any of the mortgage side. What do you What do you think is going to happen? As far as the mortgage, like the rates going up or, or changing yeah. a bit? Yeah, we'll start with bank interest rates was uh, Tori's question. Yeah, bank interest rates, uh, the non-existent bank inter interest rates, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think those are, I mean, those are going to take, that's not going to happen for a long time that those go up. Yep. Um, mortgage interest rates. I mean, it really kind of depends on the volatility of the market and how that, if it starts to go up and down, um, I think they'll use the mortgage rates to combat inflation as much as they possibly can. I think something that we've got to be aware of is, I mean, with the, the trillions of dollars that have been put into the economy at the beginning of la you know, last year and, you know, potentially this year, inflation is going to hit when, I mean, in the next, within the next five years, and it's not going to hit, but it's going to hit really, really hard. Um, and so make sure that when you're doing things that you're, you know, aware of that, you know, the effect of what's inflation going to have on your, your investments, your, your taxation, your, you know, your cash that you have in a mattress, whatever, but um, inflation's coming. So what do they do when, when you say inflation's coming Pay attention. What are some things they need to watch? You know, some of the things that, that I mean, uh, are one of the things that if ever, ever a lot of people are refinancing, make sure you refinance for a fixed rate. Don't, don't do an arm or something you're going to get stuck with. Um, you know, so, and then when you're looking at investments, make sure it's going to keep up with inflation. You know, some kind of, you know, some investments do, some investments don't. I mean, putting money, yeah, you need to have cash sitting in your, in your bank, but a bank interest rate is not going to keep up with inflation. It's going to, you know, decrease. So, Make sure you're using your your investments. You're getting the the re return that you you want out of it, um, and the assets are you know in, inflation resistant, if you will, um, versus looking at out you know just just having the cash because hoarding cash is not going to be an inflation you know strategy. Yeah. Yeah. Scott, uh, really quick, I'm just going to so on the chat, Nancy uh, uh, Rivera. Um, obviously, Deb Brown, we've already identified. We're not Tori Wilson. Um, all have entity, very specific, more personal questions. So make sure you put your number in to follow up with them. And I think Steve put the link to book a <clears throat> to book a, an appointment in the chat. Do you want me to put my number up there as well, or it's up to you, my friend? All right, um, I'll, I'll throw it out there then. <laughs> Either one of you can answer. Um, actually, so Kent said, what about 63 years old in a Roth? What would you say about that? Well, then. Yeah, I mean, that's a little bit. I mean, as long as, you know, I wouldn't use that as your only retirement plan. But I mean, putting uh, assets in there that you're going to be able to leave in there and, you know, wait to, to pull it out. I mean, it, the, the Roth is, is a great, great tool if you're not required to pull out money at a certain time. If you're required to pull out money at a certain time, that's those investments might be in the, in the hole at that point. And that's really gonna damage any kind of benefit or Roth. The Roth has the benefit of growing as much as possible, not paying any tax on that growth. So. Yep. Um, I what about insurance as an asset? I mean, you already know where Jason's leaning. So putting money into insurance products that are investable, you can pull them out for loans. I mean, I think that's an uh, inflation proof move. No, you? Yeah, insurance. I mean, the the insurance that Jason's talking about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, for the right people, that's a great. It's a uh, great tool to use to be able to utilize, and then you can invest. You know, take the monies, and, and as long as you're just not spending them, you know, that loan money and, and buying, you know, junk with it. Yeah. I mean, it's use that for. I mean, it's it's a wealth building, so we'll use it to build wealth versus you know just spending stuff. Yep. Um, gold and silver. I hear. I hear silver's going to uh, make the same move that GameStop uh, did. Yeah, I've got some GameStop <laughs> stock to sell you if you want. 
I'm kind of liking the small guys pop beat up on the head. <laughs> it wakes everybody up a little bit. I thought it was kind of fun. It uh, does. So, so the only question I have with silver is if you look at silver, silver, they're raising the price of silver, but the hedge funds have also bet on silver going up. So it, that doesn't really make sense to me versus what, what the, the users of Reddit are supposed to be doing. They're supposed to be like, you know, it's anti-hedge funds, anti this, but they're doing the same exact thing that the hedge funds are betting on. So I'm a little hesitant with that because I mean, why are they doing the same thing that the hedge funds are doing if they're trying to combat hedge funds? You know, like basically what they did with GameStop, you know, selling it short versus and then raising the price up to who got it knows what. You know, so uh, I, yes, I, I think having, having a diverse portfolio with gold and silver, I mean, I have gold and silver. I mean, I, yes, I do think that's a great option. Um, you know, but, but, you know, one of the things too is unless for the average layperson, unless you're studying this and doing this all day long, I mean, treat this as, as your, you know, that stuff, that type of, of action as your gambling money. I mean, yeah, you can make money on it, but is it something that's secure or, you know, can it be a consistent return? Right. You know, and yes, you have to pay attention to it. You know, there's, there's a lot of people out there that are doing the same thing. And a lot of people get, you don't want to be the last one to get in and then it drops either. Exactly. Um, I think this question came from another social channel because uh, he put it in. It says, uh, I've been sending my franchise fee payment to the Secretary of State office in my state each year for my LLC. Uh, I use for my self-directed IRA. Um, this year, I got a letter from the State Revenue Department to send the payment, which is new, uh, and a letter and the tax return to a required and a tax return for return is required. There's no mention of the IRAs that were excluded. I don't know. That's pretty personal. They're going to have to send some stuff to you, aren't they? Yeah, that, that's that, that sounds like a little more in-depth um, review of the notices and things like that. Yeah. So again, if uh, you want to put the the link up there um, for, I know you put uh, Scott's up there, put Weldon's up there as well for an appointment. That would be great. So that person can follow up or respond that way, Steve. Um, so Anita Goldback Cryptos, um, you can talk to Chris Klein about that. I mean, that's already, you know, structured. Um, Scott, I want to skip over to you because we've been talking a lot. Um, what, what do you want to add, you know, from uh, your perspective to the corporate structure? Well, I think Weldon's covered a lot of it when it comes to the taxes. Really, it's now just kind of taking a step back and evaluating your current structure <clears throat> and, you know, what these tax rates might be if the, if the proposal, in fact, goes through. Um, you know, obviously, we as individuals get taxed at, at a higher rate than as a corporation. And so, you know, if we are in the higher of the income earners, we may want to use multiple different entities and eliminate some of the pass throughs and, you know, things like that to kind of keep those tax rates low and, and spread the money out so that it's not hit with one huge tax rate, but minimize the amount of income or profit that each individual business has uh, to keep more money in your pocket and still be able to take advantage of the tax deductions. So, you know, uh, Weldon's covered it a ton when it comes to the tax portions. It's really just a reevaluating what yeah. we currently have, the entities that you have in place, the pass-through aspect versus having it taxed just as a regular corporation. Yeah. All right. Other questions? Um, I need Adam also wants to know. So first of all, we don't use equity trust. Um, we have other experts. So I put in, uh, so some of you I've been answering you privately. So make sure you do check your chat in the private chat about how to um, solve some of those. Um, what other questions? Uh, investments governed by private contract are more immune to changing versus investments governed by contract by the government. Absolutely, always. And you don't let the government control your investments. Um, it was so funny, I just did a franchise. You guys are gonna have to laugh out loud, Tom, at least Thomas and I did. Um, I was just did a franchise podcast, super cool guy. We're gonna invite him into the, our community. Um, but it was funny, he said, yeah, these people are calling him to get franchises because they've, they've tasted freedom. I said, no, they've tasted lazy. So they haven't tasted freedom. They've been on unemployment, sitting around watching TV all day and thinking that's freedom. Well, it could be freedom after they have some real money coming in that's not government dependent. So I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's an uh, interesting uh, way to- What? 
Yeah, somebody doesn't understand how much work it takes to set that up. I know, right? Yeah, I'll just live on unemployment and uh, boy, this is freedom sitting on my ass all day. Um, I think we're good. We have done anything you guys want to add. Great update. More coming. What do you think the timing is? Uh, Weldings, I know that's front and center for you. What's the timing of any more? Yeah, my guess is this is probably going to be submitted in March, April. Okay. For initial, then it'll be debated over the summer. Um, fall, they'll probably start to come up with some kind of plan. If it gets, I mean, we'll obviously keep keep in touch. I mean, and if it starts to get like there's going to be some proposals or something passes one of the sides, either the House or the Senate, then you know we'll actually you know probably do a couple updates on this. Um, you know, so just so we have that. And again, I mean, what I would recommend is, well, selfishly, call your senators or call your representatives, tell them not to pass anything for the real estate tax breaks. I mean, the, don't get rid of those things. That's going to ruin our economy, in my opinion. So, yep. so I mean, I've, I've already, and, and you can even do it just like, you know, typically go online and, and you can do it anonymously, or you can just type in, there's email things that they have on their websites, you know, type it in it's pretty quick. But, um, you know, unless they hear from us, they're not going to know. And they're going to say, oh, well, nobody cares about it. So, but we do care about it. Yep. And Nancy says, what do we tell the senators? You tell them to not pass any of the 1031 or any of the real estate. Yeah. So the real estate, the real estate investment, you know, changes is going to be detrimental to our, our real estate economy. Um, yeah. So. Yep. And by the way, um, Ron, you said your senators don't give a crap in Illinois. There's a lot of places they don't, but just blow up their phone. Um, I've actually got meetings with mine. I'm going to, I'm going to take them to dinner. I'm going to do the old fashioned stuff and get to know these guys. Cause I want our state open. Mm -hmm. So we're going all our sorts of ways. So you'll be surprised what, um, especially if you stay in your ask till ask, find out what's important to them. So stop talking first, find out what's important to them. If you're going to meet uh, with them personally, um, you'll be shocked how fast you can influence them or give them to me. I'll do it. Um, uh, Let's see, Ted Cruz, of course, he's going to go for it. Um, I think that's good. So we'll be back probably, like you said, around April. We got tax time anyway. A lot of you do not delay. When we say do something, we mean it. Um, some of you are missed huge opportunities by not getting your corporations fixed, but Scott is here. Um, I think before we leave, though, make sure you put, um, you know, Weldon, Scott, and I know Jason's out here as well. Jason does a kind of insurance that also will help uh, for, a, for with a lot of you. Just get you some insurance because it'll... Don't you think, I, I hate to say it's a recession proof, but it is um, for a lot of you. I mean, there's a lot of reasons you need, you need insurance. Yeah, it's a great, I mean, it's a great tool when used properly. Yep. So go ahead and put in uh, the Weldon's is out there now. Scott's out there and go ahead and put in Jason Henderson's and Jason, uh, go ahead and take appointments out of here as well. And um, I think we are good to go and uh, we'll be back. I'm sure if not before, uh, for sure by April, if not before, how about that? Yeah, I think I'll keep you up to date when they, you know, something gets submitted or something like that. I think maybe we do an update on what actually is being submitted. Yep. And then on yep. our side, guys, make sure you uh, post this over on the table Facebook pages, 100K Facebook pages, back to out to MIT. I wish more people were on today. I know we're on every platform, uh, but we need to re-air this all over. Uh -huh. All right. Thanks, you guys. Appreciate you. Thanks for having me. All right. Bye. All right. Thank you. All right, so back to our agenda um, over here at Integrated Wealth Systems. This is a big part of it. And uh, we're gonna be extremely active throughout the year. And again, our heart and soul are for the entrepreneurs to navigate through this and uh, keep you healthy uh, and in front of you know, any interesting turns. So uh, seriously, um, even if you start with term insurance, Jason and I talked about this yesterday, insurance is going to be a vehicle. Um, term's not perfect, but at least it's something. Um, you die, it pays off, you know, your debt and doesn't leave your family struggling without you. Um, ideally, you move up to at least the next level. And there's a lot that can recession proof, um, inflation proof your portfolio. Um, I would scream to your senators. I think it is absolutely pivotal that they do not screw with the real estate, the, the entire basis of the infrastructure. Everybody wealthy owns real estate. So that one's a big one. And um, Again, we're just gonna get back to our lane and you and how to make money. So mark your calendars, all of you, February's marketplace. We're gonna be doing, like we said, two a month. We're very aggressive this year in helping you make money. I may change that 399, by the way. So if you're a graduate, 
and Steve and Thomas, I'll have you speak to this. You'll first of all, I'll speak to those of you who have not attended the marketplace. If you've not attended February 11th and 12th or February 25, 26, we do need you both days. Please, 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 we need you both days. Absolutely pivotal um, to help you learn to make money. Um, it is the greatest gift you will give yourself in 2021. And we don't say that because I need you at a marketplace. Uh, your $97 um, does, you know, barely keeps our, it won't even keep our lights on. And phone bill, I can tell you that by the amount of phone calls we make out of here. So it is not about that for us. It's about you learning that skill. Those of you who are graduated, um, you must be in the graduate marketplace. And if you don't know if you are, call our office. Um, so Thomas, if you wanna put in Molly, Kristen and Lavelle's number, they can look you up in the system, make sure you are officially logged in. Cause we do, Thomas is very, very, I mean, aggressive, I'd say. Um, at my command of marketing to you graduates and saying, get to our marketplace. So the 12th uh, from three to six and the 13th from however long he wants to do it all day, 10 to three. So you have our promises, eight hours during each marketplace for graduates to rejoin and sell. So there's no excuse besides you don't show up that you're not making money. So if you've already been to the marketplace again, $399 lifetime for today. I think we should add a zero because it was a ridiculous offer that I decided I had to have been drinking too much wine that day. I made that up. Um, so $3.99 for a lifetime of fast cash, which is three hours a week of coaching, four weeks a month, and two graduate marketplaces, 16 hours to sell your stuff for $399. What'd you figure out, Thomas? It's like 40 cents or 16 cents. I mean, uh, it's, it's actually crazy. overall with all the coaching and the marketplace over the course of the year, it's 12 cents an hour. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, make sure you're in lifetime right there is asklaurel.com forward slash lifetime. Go sign up for $3.99. Even if you can't make every one of them, do your best to make it. I mean, your biggest gift to yourself is learn to make money um, and then get these entities making money. It is critical. And then with the money, then you go out and invest and get invested. That pattern is pivotal. Um, we are going to be, I mean, I'd say screaming from the mountaintops, but literally, um, if you're serious, you know, so, I mean, People say, are you going to change your conversation? No, not until you all behave. Um, but we are going to be adding some conversations. Uh, a few other things we are going to be doing that are additive. Kyle and I are going to be launching big, big launch with McGraw-Hill. We're getting a contract coming soon. So September, October are Make Your Kids Millionaires. That will not be the title. Um, they're going to change it. So right now, our working title is MakeYourKidsMillionaires.com. You can get our galley copy. It's still out there for 20 bucks. Um, we'll be doing a huge launch. I am writing a course right now. We're writing a course on two of them, actually, how to buy and sell companies, because right now um, it's going to get worse and worse. The more these shutdowns, Canada's got the most ridiculous lockdown. Um, the entire province in some of these province has eight people and they are locking people into quarantine camps. Yep. Welcome to the new thing. They're hotels but they're run by the government. And to get into the country, because I'm married to a Canadian, you have to pay for security. You have to pay for your test. You have to pay to get out. You have to pay for your hotel. It will cost you $2,000 extra to move into Canada. Welcome to no travel to Canada. They just killed their economy. So um, that sucks <laughs> for any of you in Canada. I'm sure, Anita, you knew that. I don't know what other Canadians are out here, but you know, um, I, I, it was so odd is I think you can get out, but getting in, getting back to your own country is very expensive. Um, we're also doing a course on how to monetize a summit, um, which means you got to go build a database, which is also why you should be at the marketplace because you get to build a database at the marketplace. Uh, we're very open and free about that. And um, so those are two. We're going to do how to monetize a summit. And there's no reason, like Anita, I could go name names. Kelly, there's a lot of you. You need to have summits this year. So we're going to teach you how to monetize and we're going to teach you how to buy and sell companies. And um, what else are we going to teach them this year? I thought I had one more thing to talk about. Well, we, we, we're putting the plans together for the uh, author weekend. Yeah, we're going to see. Because if people don't behave, then. <laughs> uh, oh, I know what it is. So, Anita, I actually talked to uh, Jim Hannafin yesterday. I had a big talk with him yesterday morning, about an hour. We are going to put together um, a big Canadian just broadcast. So, Thomas, I said either end of February. Um, we could put it into our uh, marketing calendar, Stephen Thomas, end of February, beginning of March, but not too much later. So Jim is going to go through the, the the challenges now in Canada, which are very different, but I mean, significant. I mean, it is ridiculous. You walk into some stores, depending on the province and the cities, you know, you, you U.S. people are going to be shocked. Like you literally will walk in and if it's not essential, they have put bags and like, like sheets over top, like clothing, because clothing is not essential. 
I mean, it's ridiculous what you cannot do. It is so shut down up there. I don't know how even the big box stores, uh, it's, I, it's paralyzing. So um, I asked Jim, I said, you know all the details of how all this stuff rolls out across Canada. So he is going to come and we will market that heavily. My, my, go my only goal in doing it later is we have so many Canadian clients that need to hear this conversation because they're in such pain. And uh, I know we focus a lot on the US market. So coming soon, pay attention for that. Um, I did get Jim to talk about how to monetize in a very closed economy and um, also just how to kind of, you know, recession proof yourself because what they're doing up there is going to force into one of the greatest recessions that country's ever seen, unfortunately. Um, Non-essential. Who says you're not essential? See, I'm never closed. I, I just said I'm essential because I think I am. I think our team is. I think what we do for you guys and everybody's critical. So please make February offer for the marketplace. Um, so Christopher wants, so please review. So the offer for the marketplace is $97. And I don't, I mean, if you want two tickets, have two tickets. I think we have some specials going though, Thomas, right? Do we have specials right now? We had $21 in the month of January. Are yep. we going to do a love and money special coming next week? We could probably put it on now. Well, we don't want to, you know, spoil the good news, but rumor has it there may be two tickets for $28. Is Steve out there wants to speak to that a little bit? So Christopher, here's the phone number, 775-588-9200. Lavelle, Molly, or Kristen will answer that call and you can say, hey, I got inside scoop because I was live and I can get two tickets for 28 bucks. That's going to be our love and money special. Steve, anything you want to add to that? I'm pretty excited about the love and money special uh, okay. because what we're going to do is we're going to run a contest and it's probably going to be starting later this afternoon as soon as our team gets the page up and rolling. Uh, and it's going to be... Uh, you sharing your love and money story with us however however much of a horror story it is or however much of a of a, a greatest love story um you know happily ever after story it is um tell us that story and you will also be registered to um win a couple's money makeover with laurel so um a lot of our our community especially eileen who's um uh, who actually uh, uh, gave you this term um we want to um, allow you to do a, a money date with your partner, with your loved one. So Laurel wants to give you that, that gift. Um, and as soon as that link is out, watch it all over social media. We're going to send an email out. Um, but that is going to be our, our topic in, uh, for the entire month. Yeah, super fun. And uh, we know what's coming, probably more horror stories than other, you know, but if you want to, if you want to like rival for the most expensive divorce, I'm right up there with you. That'd be kind of fun. Um, but it's a lot. Like I just went through a massive my health injury. We're still like, we have inside scoop, like a little betting going on and how much um, the kind of accident I had, I think it's going to end up being around $150,000 because I have two ERs, uh, ambulance visit, trauma surgery, uh, multiple surgeons. I got all sorts of bills. Just they keep coming. 19,000, 17,000, 74,000 just came the other day. It's exciting. So thank God for the way we do health insurance in the United States. I can promise you, I love these Canadians scrolling going, oh my God, oh my God. Um, but I can tell you, if you didn't have, if you weren't properly prepared, um, what happened to me could take, we talked about that yesterday. It could take families completely out. So, and then that start a fight, a death in a family, my God. I mean, I mean you, you don't maybe put that in the love and money category, but the death of a loved one or the fight of a legacy, the fight over, oh my God, you used to see the crap we see of, of unplanned legacies where you didn't tell the kids, the kids go to war or they're blended families and the kids think that they deserve something that the other family came with. I mean, let's get to it. So unfortunately, I think they're going to be horror stories and interesting stories more than, you know, I think Eileen and John have a great story. They have money dates once a week. They fabulously get along. They now make money together. Um, they have great money rules together. So we want to hear the good, the bad, and the ugly. Every range of it. Um, and where do they put that story? It's coming soon. So we're working on that link. Uh, we'll send that out to everybody via email and then also post it over social media. If you want to get an invitation firsthand, go ahead and go over to asklaurel.com. Those of you that are on social media, go to asklaurel.com and make sure that you're registered so you can get all those updates. Anita, I got to respond, honey. I've seen the Canadian markets. I would have died. Um, Jason's father didn't get seen for 92, hour, 92 hours. I had 58 minutes or I would have been dead. 
So I would be very scared to be in a Canadian hospital with what I had. I think I would bend dead because um, you don't get seen fast enough. I love my people. I actually filled out my own survey. My team would have a heart attack. You know, I never do that shit. I actually filled out a survey. It was like world-class healthcare that I had because I don't know if it was because I was trauma about dead. I don't know. Um, world-class. It was unprecedented speed. Um, siblings. Oh, there you go. Here's a funny one. Yep. Siblings going escrow. I mean, we have clients who have trusts that are so locked up. I could speak their names, but I won't to protect the innocent. I mean, Tom, we all know who they are, like clients who have millions locked into these weird trusts. And believe me, we've had some of our, from the Weldons to lawyers to Kelly Corsack, who knows everything in my mind about money, um, can't unlock them. Like, it's unbelievable. Like these poor kids need the money. I mean, they need to learn, but they are, they're at the table, they're wanting to learn and we can't get the damn trusts unlocked. I don't even know who makes up those things sometimes. So we don't care what it is. Let's, um, uh, let's, Let's rock and roll. Let's see what the stories are. Um, and then I'm sure the guys will have some amazing way that we're going to pick the fun stories too. Um, and so join right now. So if you have not done the marketplace, please be there February 11th and 12th. We got a massive room coming right now. What are we at? About 140 already registered. And uh, so we have a huge room yep. in February and uh, uh, we're out jamming and getting more and more new people, which means why go to the graduate marketplace? Because you get new people all the time. So then you, you, then you say, I don't have a database. Well, where have you been? You should be at every graduate marketplace. If you actually go to every graduate marketplace between now and say June, and you then you go to our how to monetize a summit, you should have, let's just say you only get 40 people, 50 people minimum out of a new marketplace. You should have a hundred, you should have four or 500 people in a database. That is plenty of people to do a market, to do a summit. So there is no way unless you just sit down that you cannot make money build a database and then be at our monetize a summit uh, workshop and get going. This is going to be a huge year. We have a very, very strategically planned year, maybe because we actually didn't travel. We all sat down together for a long time last fall. Um, but I feel like what we're doing, everything uh, layers on to the next thing, right? And then once you start making bigger money at marketplaces, what are you going to be doing? And then once you monetize a summit, you need to go put that money to work. So maybe you want to go buy and sell a company. So that'll be the next thing we're going to be offering. So, and then cryptocurrency is coming. So we've got all sorts of goodies for you this year that will be stacked on learning, on learning, on learning. So don't go anywhere. You don't need another community. You're going to get it all here. Um, and there's our phone number in the chat. Again, 775-588-9200. So uh, check out uh, TikTok. We'll be more and more out there and Clubhouse coming uh, later today, tomorrow. Anything else, Thomas, Steve? No, just if you have not uh, signed up yet for that workshop, go to askloral.com slash meetup. Um, Steve did put it there, though. If you have questions, we put out a ton of links today. Always call the team, 775-588-9200. Happy to get you hooked up accordingly and rock and roll and changing your conversation about money. Yep. And Jackie, if you want to uh, email Steve, Steve, if you want to, uh, we'll invite, we'll send you a clubhouse invite. So Jackie, will send that to you. Um, people want your millionaires in training background screen, Thomas. I don't know if there's a way Steve or Thomas to put in how to get your. Cool yep, they can you get it when they attend. Yes. All right. So you get, when you attend your graduate marketplace, we just have to remember to give it to the grads. Uh, but when you attend again, you will get the backgrounds uh, when you attend the marketplace of the graduate. And then um, Steve, just take uh, Jacqueline's information. And as soon as we jump out on Clubhouse, we'll invite you. Maybe we'll invite all of you. We'll just send you all a big text. All right. We all set. Have a great day. Talk to you next Tuesday, 12 noon. Love and money. Eileen and I, you're going to hear the biggest love story ever and uh, just totally acknowledge her and John for the way they live their relationship, their money contract, and she is raring to go uh, to support all of you. So share with all of your friends and family, and even the ones you fight with, have them come. Maybe we can help give you some new talk tracks to relax this family fight. All right, talk to you all soon. Thanks, have a great day.